This is an evidence-based practice presentation by Jennifer Williams and partial fulfillment of the requirements of Nursing 4800. I will be sharing information found while researching the question, among nurses administering medications, does implementing a policy using interventions to reduce interruptions versus not implementing a policy using interventions to reduce interruptions decrease medication administration errors? Patient safety is a major concern in healthcare facilities today. Among patient safety concerns, medication administration errors are a preventable issue. As nurses care for patients, they are expected to provide health, not harm. But distractions in the environment, such as call lights, ringing phones, and questions by patients, visitors, and coworkers, can prevent nurses from focusing their attention on the five rights of medication administration. Medication errors can prevent the patient from receiving the correct treatment to cure their illness or can result in death or disability. To decrease distractions, some hospitals have begun implementing non-interruption or quiet zone policies. Some implementations have included medication areas marked by red or yellow tape to indicate a quiet zone, signage on medication carts requesting others not to interrupt medication administration, or drug tabard vest worn by nurses. However, there is debate on whether these policies are actually decreasing the frequency of medication errors. Historically, hospitals have required that nurses use two patient identifiers prior to giving medications, as well as check for medication allergies. While these requirements allow us to meet Joint Commission regulations, there is more that nurses can do to prevent harm to patients. The goal of healthcare workers is to provide safe, patient-centered care that is based on evidence. With this in mind, healthcare organizations can assess causes of interruptions during medication administration, as well as determine if there are interventions that will decrease errors. This presentation seeks to answer the question, among nurses administering medications, does implementing a policy using interventions to reduce interruptions versus not implementing a policy using interventions to reduce interruptions decrease medication administration errors. The Google Foam and Galileo databases were searched for articles relevant to this area of research. Selection criteria included nursing and medical journals published within the last five years. Search terms used were reducing interruptions to improve medication safety, quiet zone to prevent medication errors for nurses, and sterile cockpit method for medication reduction of errors. Five studies were researched whose main objectives were to implement a policy that reduced interruptions during medication administration. Following the implementation, researchers assessed the effects of reducing interruptions during medication administration on medication error rates. Of the five studies, two of them were mixed method studies and the remaining three were quantitative. The first study was a quantitative time series experiment occurring in a 30-bed medical oncology unit. The sterile cockpit method was implemented to reduce disruptions and distractions during high-volume medication administration. Nursing staff used a data collection tool to measure the number and type of interruptions they experienced. Medication error rates were calculated using the number of medication event reports submitted during that time. After implementation of the sterile cockpit method, the mean number of interruptions was noted to have decreased. The medication error rate was reduced by 42.78%. Another study was a participatory quantitative study with a 2 by 7 within subjects design among 18 nurses pre-intervention and 19 nurses post-intervention in a simulated ambulatory chemotherapy unit. Observers documented medication errors during seven medication verification and administration tasks. There was a substantial reduction of errors in four of the seven tasks, including verifying the medication volume in the syringe, verifying medication in an infusion pump, administering IV push medications, and programming of the pump with infusion initiation. Although the proposed interventions were found to be effective at decreasing errors of commission during administration, they were less effective at decreasing detection errors in verification tasks. 
The third research study examined 10 previous studies, eight in North America and two in Europe. These studies were intervention studies reporting quantitative data from direct observations. Of the 10 studies, only four noted a significant decrease in interruptions post-intervention. Only three of the 10 studies measured medication administration error rates. Of those three, only two showed a significant reduction in medication errors. This study provided weak evidence of a correlation between non-interruption interventions and decreased interruption rates. It also revealed limited evidence of their ability to decrease medication error rates. A fourth study was a mixed methods before-after study conducted in three wards of a Dutch university hospital. Interruptions and errors were observed during 313 medication administrations. In addition, nurses were involved in a focus group to discuss barriers and enablers to the implementation of drug round tabards. A decrease in 75% of interruptions was detected after implementing the use of drug round tabards. In addition, medication errors were reduced by 66%. Although nurses felt the tabards presented a clear indication that they were completing a task that required concentration, they also felt the tabards raised questions among staff and visitors. Also, the nurses were concerned about their appearance and hygiene issues associated with repeated use of the tabards. Lastly, a quantitative and qualitative study was conducted among 20 nurses and 11 student nurses on a 45-bed medical unit. A survey tool was used to record 12 sources of distractions and interruptions, and hospital event reports were consulted to note medication errors. After implementation of a safe zone, nurses and students reported an increase in interruptions from nurse practitioners, PAs, and doctors. They also noted an increase in distractions from visitors and from loud noises in the area. Medication errors increased from 1.74 to 2.88 per 1,000 patient days. Interestingly, they noted an increase in patient satisfaction scores and patient perceptions of safety and quality during that time. Upon compiling the evidence, the data shows that three of the five studies noted a significant decrease in medication errors after implementation of no interruption zones. One shows limited evidence of a decrease in medication errors, and one shows an increase in medication errors. Based on the evidence reviewed, I recommend the use of no interruption or quiet zone policies for medication administration. There are many available resources for such an area to be created. Many healthcare facilities use a closed room for medication withdrawal and preparation. Additionally, red or yellow duct tape around the medication cart is a reminder and indication that no interruptions or distractions occur in that area. Signs placed on medication carts and drug round tabards worn by nurses are other methods to implement this policy. Wording on these signs and tabards would include a phrase such as, do not disturb, nurse on medication round. Prior to implementation of this policy, I recommend that staff be educated regarding the evidence on which this policy is based and the exact procedure to be followed. This policy would include nurses avoiding phone calls or initiating conversations during medication rounds. Patients and their families should also be educated regarding the use of no interruption zones upon admission to the hospital. Information explaining the use of these zones will decrease questions posed to the nurse using the zone. Although only three of the five studies showed a significant decrease in medication errors, I do not believe further study is needed. The cost and inconvenience of implementing one of these methods is small compared to the decreased risk of harm to patients. The stakeholders for this policy implementation will be healthcare administrators, nurses, patients, families, and insurance companies. Administrators will reduce the cost of the patient's care and potential legal fees from lawsuits when sentinel events are reduced. Nurses will benefit by having the necessary environment to concentrate solely on the patient's medications rather than the questions of those in the vicinity. This will allow the nurse to complete tasks more quickly and accurately as well as decrease the risk of a lawsuit. Patients and their families will benefit by receiving safe, evidence-based care that reduces their risk for adverse events and increases their quality of living. Lastly, insurance companies will benefit by patients receiving positive outcomes that decrease their length of stay and promote good health, thereby decreasing cost. Evidence supports the use of no-interruption zone policies as a means to increase safety during medication administration. 
Proposed methods of creating no interruption zones are inexpensive and should therefore create no financial reasons for rejection. Administrators and insurance companies are likely to support this due to the likelihood of positive patient outcomes which will decrease cost. Administrators will also appreciate the increased patient satisfaction that will likely occur from these safety measures. Patients and their families will likely support this based on their desire for safety as long as someone is assigned to answer call lights and request for help during medication administration. Many nurses are likely to initially reject this measure due to dislike of the drug round tabard or concerns over feeling unapproachable while in the no interruption zone. Policy changes, education on evidence-based practice, and enforcement by leadership may be necessary for acceptance among nurses.